When it comes to voice acting in video games, some games have outstanding voice acting performances. Up, homie, huh? Is that how you act, huh? When a, when a friend makes a mistake, huh? No. Really? Oh, no. What, oh, so what, it's just me getting hurt? Is that funny? Other games could have been perfected if things were just a little bit different. I think you're cute and I like seeing you up here. Oh my goodness, right? Or... Also, the accent. The accent is... I mean, it's not the only thing, but... Uh... Okay, I should just go over there to the piloting thing. And then there's the games that have some of the worst voice acting in not only video games, but any form of media that utilizes voice acting. That a young buck like you could actually do the right thing and avoid getting his sorry I butt kicked out the game. Back. He told me to chill. Sounds like a wise fella to win in this league. You need all hands on deck. Good call. The ref should have checked his cell. He was trash all night. Listen, we have a lot to talk about, so make sure you guys buckle in. Now, I think we need to rewind and look at NBA 2K15 again here, because just what is going on with this voice acting? This was actually first brought to my attention by a video game donkey video from a few years back. What's going on tonight? I'm running free all over the court and you didn't give me the ball. Man, what are you talking about? I mean, I get it. They wanted to have some sense of realism by having the actual voices of the players, but I'm just not sure if this was like the first take or the only take. Maybe there was just like no one in the studio that day who was like, hey, we might want to like edit this in the studio and cut out some pauses or do something to make this more presentable. Nope, instead we get this. That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Get over yourself, man. But there are so, so many other voice acting examples throughout gaming history that just took things to a whole nother level. The original Resident Evil is a great example of this. It's a chef's kiss. The voice acting has notoriously been known for being absolutely horrible, but it crosses into the realm of so bad it's amazing. Hurry, this way. Oh, Barry. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life. I mean, this is like the 90s here. Voice acting in video games was still a newer thing. And nowadays we can look back at this in a charming way while also acknowledging that this was just something else. Is that you, Jill? What's going on? How come you look so scared? Look at this. What do you think of it? I've been thinking something is wrong with this house. Alternatively, if you didn't play Resident Evil, maybe you're at an arcade or you had a Dreamcast or something and you played House of the Dead 2? Does anyone else remember that game? Uh, 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 uh. This is a present from me to you. Look. At your right. I don't know, something about horror games in the older 90s were just something special when it came to how voice acting was approached. What happened to Amy and Harry? Have to hurry. Help me! Oh. I'm not gonna let you get away. Only man himself can control its fate. You're nothing. At last, you've come. Friends, the door of fate shall open. Over on the Nintendo 64 side of things, I feel like not enough people talk about this nowadays, but it was a pretty big talking point back in the day. Star Fox 64 was a game that had full on voice acting and for the most part, the voice acting across the board was pretty good, with one exception. The character Slippy. Whoa, help me. Thanks Fox, I thought they had me. How's the R-Wing doing Fox? Enemy field analyzed. You did it! I was worried for a moment. No! I'm monkey food if I don't leave. This was like a meme back in the early form days. While it's not uncommon for a female voice actress to play a male character, Slippy just didn't ever just sound right, and most of the time the character just came across as goofily annoying. Yippee! You did it! Huh? What? Let me handle this! Slippy, get back here! Slippy! Slippy can be such a headache! 
Maybe the reason I remember this character so vividly is that back in the day, Slippy was my favorite character when I was a kid with a Nintendo 64. And I remember being the only person who liked Slippy. In 1997, Mega Man X4 released for the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation. And for the most part, the game was reviewed relatively well because there was differences in the way that the characters played. It added a lot of replay value. And then there was also this story. And one of the most memorable things that I have with this game is this one cutscene in particular. Ah! No, this isn't happening. There's no reason for me to go on. What? What am I fighting for? I mean, to be fair, I guess a lot of these examples are American dubs and voiceovers, but man, this was just amazing. You know, throughout the Legend of Zelda franchise, Link has pretty much mostly been a silent protagonist, even with the newer games going into the voice acting realm and having characters that can talk. Link still doesn't talk. This might actually be because one of the few times Link did actually talk was in Zelda CDI, and we all know how terribly that went. Gee, it sure is boring around here. I just wonder what Ganon's up to. How about a kiss? For luck. You've got to be kidding. Lamp oil, rope, bombs? You want it? It's yours, my friend, as long as you have enough rubies. The Triforce says you can only win by falling. I wonder what that means. You dare bring light to my lair? You must die! An obvious one a lot of people point to is Oblivion, which had interesting voice acting to say the least, but it was an ambitious game and had a lot of voice acting and a lot to cover. It's just interesting that they managed to leave in so many outtakes. Lady Umbernox has hired a new captain. Lady Umbernox has hired a new captain of the guard. And already some of the voicing in that game feels kind of disjunctive from the natural flow of conversation. Salute. Welcome. Please say your piece. How are you? Not bad. Good day. Have you heard any word about the other provinces? Nothing I'd... Well met. Using poison is so deliciously evil. I once poisoned my aunt Stew, and she fell over dead with her face right in the bowl. <laughs> I'm not listening to you. It's because I don't like you. Are you here to rescue me? But watching all these clips out of context will never not be funny. What's also funny is like a year later, the game Two Worlds released and a lot of people drew comparisons between this game and Oblivion, which at its time, Oblivion was still a very popular game despite the voice acting. But it seems like Two Worlds may have even taken a note from Oblivion by also having this voice acting that feels very... Eh. You that bounty hunter? Not many of you left in Talmont, eh? I... Look upon a rarity while you can, for I shall be gone soon. The village elder will be here directly. They have found another body. I shall wait. People, tell me more. Swiftly now. Warriors. Hard ones. Not very friendly. One of them stayed to await your return. They even made fun of the first game's voice acting in the sequel. A noble warrior thou art. Me thinketh it according to reason. Wouldst thou be seeking venture and fortune, mayhap? Did somebody hit you? Okay, there are some games though that come close to almost having good voice acting across the board. Like for instance, Sonic Adventure 1. It's a Dreamcast game. This is way back in the 90s when voice acting was still like a newer thing in video games. A lot was excusable and passable. And for the most part, the voices that were used in Sonic Adventure 1 would kind of lay the groundwork for how modern Sonic characters would sound in most cases. It's a chaos emerald. No way. With the exception of Tails. Mm, wow, that dream brought back memories. I owe so much to Sonic. Sonic! Oh no! I'd better get to that missile before he detonates it! I'm out of control! Mayday! Mayday! Going down! I know Tails is supposed to be like a younger character, but they just hired some random kid to voice the character instead of hiring like a professional voice actor who can sound like a kid or a younger voice actor who could perform as a voice actor. Tails by far in Sonic Adventure 1 had the worst voice out of the entire cast, and it would be a few years before Tails kind of got corrected with a better voice actress. 
It's most definitely a trap. I don't think Eggman will honor his agreement. I'm going. Sonic? Heavy Rain was a really interesting game. It was kind of one of those first bigger budget cinematic stories in like the PlayStation 3 era. Reception on this game seems pretty mixed nowadays. And when it comes from the voice acting, it seems like for the most part, the game ranges from pretty okay and acceptable voice acting to just some voice acting that just takes you completely out of the moment. Good night, Sean. My teddy, I haven't got my teddy, dad. You must have left it somewhere in the house. Do you have any idea where it could be? No, dad. Please, I can't sleep without him. That's too bad, Sean. Time to sleep now. Oh no, Dad. Please, I need my teddy. No, we'll find it in the morning. Now go to sleep. Mom would never put me to bed without teddy. Why are you mean like that? It's not my fault that Jason is gone. It's not my fault. Jason, no! When Shenmue originally released for the Sega Dreamcast, this game was revolutionary for its time. It was one of the first video games to bring a 3D open world environment that was supposed to feel like a real lifelike simulation. There were so many places to explore, things to interact with. The characters felt lifelike with daily schedules. The original game at its time was one of the most expensive video games ever developed. And to this day, there's a cult following around the Shenmue series of games. But man, oh man, was that voice acting back in the day. Just something. What's your name? Dio Hazuki. I've been expecting you, sir. Please, go on in. And then he'll kill you. He's too strong. What did you say? Stop it. I must avenge my father's murder. <laughs> hey, quit lying! Don't get me wrong, the voice acting in this game is kind of like Resident Evil. It's charming nowadays to look back, but at the same time, it shows that in a process of creating a story-driven game that has voice actors, it's very easily nowadays to be taken out of the world if the voice acting's not that great. Blame the script, blame the voice actors, or blame the pacing, whatever it is. Historically speaking, voice acting has been, have become an under-prioritized feature in a lot of games. When it comes to games made by smaller studios, good voice acting can really make the game stand out. A good example of this is like Neon White, a smaller game with a good premise, good gameplay, a bit of a goofy story, but the voice acting cast is solid and it just brings the whole game together to feel like a really good game across the board and very polished. But then there's other games that don't prioritize voice acting. A great example of this is the game Hunt Down the Free Man, where they decided, hey, we need a voice actor to play the President of the United States. Why don't we bring in DJ Killer Keemstar to voice the president. My fellow Americans, as your president and commander-in-chief, it is with a heavy heart that I'm informing you that we have made a strategic decision to surrender to the alien invaders known as the Combine. Honestly, watching this cutscene is like listening to an episode of Drama Alert or something like that. I mean, they could have put like a little radio effect or something on it to make it sound like it's not just Keemstar's regular microphone set up. But yeah, hiring a random YouTuber to do voicing without like voice coaching or something like that. Uh, weird decision. God bless you and God bless the United States of America. Chaos Wars for the PlayStation 2 released in 2006 and the voice acting definitely in this one also feels kind of just phoned in. Be careful, you'll probably get sick, just like when you eat rotten food off the ground. It's okay, Uru. Just relax and let it go. There's other games like Dynasty Warriors 3 that has some beautiful cutscenes that were pre-rendered for this game just to take it to the next level and make it look so visually appealing compared to other games released during its time. And then the English voice acting sounds like this. I accept the position of Grand Commander. Lord, please wait! Now is not the time to attack Wu! It's time. Spread the word. At midnight, we move to the river to face the Shu army. That's it! I'll be all dried up before noon! 
Late last year, Moist Critical did a bounty for the video game Amok Runner. Whoever could get the fastest speedrun time in just two weeks would win $10,000. But the catch about this game was it was a pretty unknown game and it wasn't really that great of a game either. It was inspired by a book, which also had some movie adaptations. But ultimately, the big takeaway is not only is the game relatively clunky, but also the voice acting is uh, just kind of like a droning on that just never stops. I know that I've kept you waiting, Doctor. I'm not going to ask for your forgiveness for it. I guess it's a seasonal, temporary condition. First, I need to examine you. Um, can I check your body temperature? Sometimes when my vision goes black, I, I can't see anything. Help me. Now is not the time. Over the last two decades or so, we've seen the Madden series really evolve in trying to make video game gameplay that highly resembles the same type of experience you would get from watching NFL on TV. Not only is the strategy emulated and the presentation resembles much of what you would see watching TV regularly, there's commentary much like what you would watch tuning into a real NFL game on a Sunday. This wasn't always the case though. If you go back to some of the earlier games that tried to capitalize on the same thing, you instead get NFL. NFL Sports Talk Football 93 starring Joe Montana for the Sega Genesis. Conceptually speaking, it was pretty ahead of its time for when this game released in 93. Looking back now, it just doesn't sound as good. The kick. <laughs> Take the bounce. He takes it at the 10. Boom! He's down. The Giants will start first and 10 at the 22-yard line. Bloody Roar 4 was another fighting game released in 2003, and its voice acting was just fantastic in its cutscenes. Gaia, you've made a bad mistake. Nagy, wait. I've got something I want to ask you. Will you answer me? Tell me. That dragon. What's the connection? Ah, ah. Then there's games like The Kings of Fighters Maximum Impact 2, which probably have okay voice actors talent-wise, but the characters' voices never really seem to line up correctly to the type of character that they're portraying or the motives of that character. I get it's a fighting game and they're just trying to get some voice acting in for English audiences, but still. He disappeared! First that chick, now this guy. This is too weird. Dio, you're really here because you were worried about me, right? No. I was just, well... What do you think happened? You've probably seen this before. And that's why you're here. Hold on a second! Now, for the most part, it seems like everybody universally agrees that Jared Leto is the best actor to not only play the Joker, but to play any character in any project ever. So there's no real surprise when you look back at a Batman game like Dark Tomorrow, for example, and hear the Joker in this game. It just... Doesn't really sound right. Like, I mean, joking aside, this is a pretty weak Joker performance, I feel like. Oh, Batman, you knew as usual. Always playing your cards close to the vest. You can't do that when one of those cards is the Joker. Kidnapping Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> also, just like an extra one that's worth noting here, in Cyberpunk 2077, the children just sound a little bit off. Like, they obviously picked full adults to voice these kids, and there's just something really unsettling about them. Hey! I'm a princess, and you're not. La, 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 la. Um, what a freak. Where are you going? I also remember years ago, back when Games with Gold was a thing and Xbox wasn't discontinuing that for some reason, one of the games that they released for a free month was called D4, which stood for Dark Dreams Don't Die. Now, I did put a good effort into this game, but I do have to be honest, I was completely lost. I had no idea what was going on in it. I know some people really did like the story of it, though I do have to say at times some of the voice acting did feel a little bit off, like it was taking me out of the reality of the world or whatever, or maybe it was just the plot. Either way, the voicing was a little bit weird. Boston has the best clam chowder in the world. You're, you're with me on this, right? Right? Huh? I have no basis for comparison. What? I've never eaten clam chowder anywhere but Boston. So it's the best in the world by default. If the windows were really squeaking, why, we'd all be dead by now. Of all people should understand. We've already talked about a Mega Man game in this list, but there is another game in the Mega Man series that also had some questionable voice acting. Mega Man 8. Just listen to this. What do you make of these? These? 
seems to be energy resources. You must recover all the energy immediately, Mega Man. But where is Dr. Wiley? That's a good question. We may be able to locate another energy emission from the radar room. When we find that media, we'll find Dr. Wiley. Now, this game did have a reputation of having a little bit of maybe a huge rush out the door before release. I don't know. I feel bad for Mega Man fans. I just feel like they've had it really rough, historically speaking. But yeah, this was wild. Okay, there was another game that came out on the arcade and later was ported onto the PlayStation 2 that ran in the same engine as the House of the Dead called Vampire Night. And this game, ironically enough, also had some very terrible voice acting besides it's just House of the Dead 2, like we showed earlier. To heal my pain, I shall sacrifice my soul and be a vampire. Humans, heal my soul! Wait, who are you? We hunt the creatures of the dark. Vampire hunters. Live your life as a human. Fight your soul once again. Please wait, Sir Vampire. Stay here. Okay, this next one's kind of an interesting one to put on this list because I know for a fact that some people think that this is one of the greatest games of all time. So to maybe bring the voice acting up into question might be something that upsets some people, but Castlevania Symphony of the Night definitely didn't have very great voice acting. It's probably one of those like Resident Evil that falls into the, it was bad, but also charming because the game was good. So we'll let it go. Dracula rises once a century, one chance for each Belmont to shine. And then we're finished. Forgotten. If I bring him back now, the battle can last for eternity. But yeah, even games that some people think are the greatest of all time still have their little flaws here and there. Voice acting was hard to get right, especially in the early video game days. This next one is one that I didn't even know about and I didn't realize how hated the voice acting was until I started doing research specifically for this video. But Grand Theft Auto 1 had an expansion called like 1969 and it was like in London or something. Personally, I'd never played it. But if you take a closer look at the voice acting in it, I can see how some people thought the voice acting maybe came across as a little bit annoying. Listen right, we're looking for a lad who can do his stuff. I've heard you're a bit tasty, no messing around or you get a slap. Remember, I'm the monkey and you're the cheese grater. Just a little bit pleased with yourself, ain't ya? And rightly so, rightly so. You're on the way to being a big face in this filthy cesspit. Listen right, we've heard you're a boy who can do his stuff. And by hookers and by crooks, you've proved you ain't bad. Yeah, I bad at all, Sunshine. Know what I mean? But hey, Elijah or Luke, what about some modern games? You guys talked a lot about older games. Where are all the new games on this list? In general, yeah, voice acting has gotten substantially better over the years. There's still a lot of stinkers here and there, and but then when a game comes out that has bad voice acting, it almost seems more jarring than ever before. I think the new Gollum game is a perfect example of this. I mean, I don't know. There were the Lord of the Rings movies. We already know what this character is supposed to look and sound like, and instead we get this. Shire. Baggins is from the Shire. Blind elf. Smeagol brought food. <laughs> yes. Friends do not play nasty tricks. Yes, like that wizard. <sighs> they will find us. There's not too much more to criticize about this game than what everyone else has already talked about, so we won't beat it up too much, but yeah, I mean, they, they missed the mark here. One that I feel like was criticized as a newer game for fair reasons, but nobody ever pointed out the voice acting was also not that great, was the Saints Row reboot. There's a few things working against Saints Row. We should do something irresponsible to celebrate. What do you have in mind? Oh, I don't know, the money fight! <laughs> 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 if you give me seven measly little llamas, I will give to you this extremely valuable bear. Seven to one? That's highway robbery. But I'm in. I have a lot of practice and pent up rage. I hear that. Parents? Alimony. Ah. Anyway, 
Secret bunker address is in there. Thanks, man. To be fair, this responsibility doesn't fully fall just on the voice actors because I feel like the game writing just wasn't that great. It seemed to rely too much on slapstick humor and not like the situational humor that made the older Saints Row games that much funnier. Like, it was funny when the older Saints Row games would satiricalize a specific scenario. Saints Row, the new one, just tries to crack quips here and there. Tie that to the fact that a lot of the dialogue does not feel organic. It just feels like characters are standing around and talking, not necessarily having a conversation. Also, didn't help this game either, and I think Saints Row is one of the newer examples of a pretty bad game in voice acting also. Across every Saints Row game, there's always been a cutscene where the leader of the Saints gives a speech saying that it's our time now. See, Saints Row 1 and 2 established this tradition. Listen up, people. I got some serious shit to discuss. Yeah, we cleared out the road. You think for a second that's gonna stop them? Unless we wipe all these m****s out, they're gonna keep coming. And they ain't gonna be happy. Once we're done here, go talk to one of these guys. They'll have something for you to do. It's our time now. Let's get this shit started. Alright, everybody listen up. We got some serious shit to discuss. The Saints used to own Stillwater. And it seems like the only m****s that remember that is me and Gat. I think it's time we give those other crews a wake-up call. Once we're done here, talk to one of these guys. I have something for you to do. It's our time now. Let's get this shit started. And even with the new setting, Saints Row 3 and even Saints Row 4 continued the tradition. The Syndicate has to answer for what they did. And this time, we're taking the fight to them. Talk to one of these guys. They'll have things for you to do. It's our time now. Let's get this shit started. I know over the years you've heard this speech a bunch of times. Heard it? Bitch, I wrote it. <laughs> but we need to remember why we do what we do. And today the stakes are even higher. Earth is gone. It's not coming back and nothing we do today is gonna change that. You can hit as hard as you want because when I hit back, I'm gonna lay your ass out, bitch. It's our time now. Let's get this shit started. And of course, the new Saints Row did it too, but I don't know if I'm just being too critical, but does the speech just not seem to have the same weight that the original four did? Maybe I'm being too nitpicky. Isn't that obvious? We're starting a criminal empire. What? Your car was right, Eli. About everything. Yeah, what the f is happening? Guys, we're really good at what we do. So why are we doing it for other people and not ourselves? Nina's down. Kev's down. Snickerdoodle is definitely down. Oh, do not bring her into this. Eli, this cat suffers no fools. <laughs> and neither should you. Uh. Is that a yes? Yeah, it's a yes. It's our time now. Let's get this shit started. I know there's a lot of Kingdom Hearts fans out there, but I feel like with Kingdom Hearts, when we were younger and kids, we kind of looked past some of the voice acting. And I think the main core cast with Kingdom Hearts, actually pretty decent. I think that they did a good job telling the story. It's just the rest of the characters in the world kind of come across as maybe not that great. You could say I am the biggest nobody of them all. That was undeniable proof that we totally owned you, lamers. Just lying there. Then how do we prove we weren't the ones who took them? <laughs> it's a girl. You look happy, Roxas. Cause I'm you. No, I'm me. I'm me, he says. Kyrie. Kyrie's inside me? And sometimes one bad character that's only in a certain situation can really ruin a scene when you're like, what is going on here? The same thing could be said for the NPCs of Sonic 06. They literally have one line and they still manage to make it sound just so dead inside. Hey, 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 hey. A lot of people know I'm a huge Perfect Dark fan. I think it was one of the greatest games on the Nintendo 64. And Perfect Dark Zero came out as a launch title for the Xbox 360, a prequel, and I felt like the voice acting was not good. I think that they butchered the character Joanna, who's supposed to sound a certain way. And I know they're trying to make a younger version of the character, but I'm pretty sure Joanna is like British in the original games. And in Perfect Dark Zero, for whatever reason, to try to make her sound younger, they had her accent change multiple times throughout the game's story. Something I can do for you, old woman. Return our sapient immediately. 
You don't know what you're doing! Yes, I do. I'm leaving. Sorry, gotta shoot. No offense, Master. John Lee. The creator of Deathmatch himself. Lewis Army has a file on me? The Army? Their budget wouldn't cover our paper clips. If you're not the Army, then who- Package secure! Carrington, I'm at the dig site. You're gonna wanna see this. Relaying my signal now. It's never consistent, and it also just doesn't sound like the character at all, especially for something that's only supposed to be a couple of years before the main game. Matter of fact, as far as story was concerned for this game, nothing really felt consistent across the two games. Back in 1998, there was a game called Deep Fear that was like a survival horror type game. And it came out on the Sega CS2 and the Sega Saturn. And it really took some inspiration from Resident Evil, like having awful voice acting. Leave the area lock up to me, is what I'd like to say, but this is out of gas. Everyone on base, until instructions are given, do not make a sound. Stop all construction work, I repeat. Do not make a sound. This is not a drill. I have a favor to ask, John. If you see Anna, could you tell her that she doesn't need to act so macho? She's, uh, cute if she's quiet. Tell her yourself. Then there was this really badass looking game called Robot Alchemic Drive, which also was known as Rad, and it came out on the PlayStation 2. It was published by Enix, and honestly, I mean, it's giant fighting robots. What more could you want? I don't know. Good voice acting. This is Mika Banhara, live from downtown Senjo, and an immeasurable devastation is unfolding here at the hands of an enormous humanoid weapon. It is firing what appear to be beams of massive destructive power. Because the weapon appeared with no warning, the public and the authorities appear to be in a total panic. It is a scene of unbelievable destruction and carnage. What you are seeing is not a movie. Already, numerous casualties have been reported. The uh, English voice actors in this really um, didn't pull things together to make an excellent voiced dub here. For you are the apex of evolution, the ultimate form of life. In the mid to late 2000s, there was also this game known as X-Blades. It was like an action adventure game and you get two pistol blades, which is kind of cool. Cool concept for a game overall, just the voice acting for a 2009 localization just wasn't really all that great. Are you all right? What was that? The light magic. Light magic. If it's really so powerful, it must be able to lift the curse. Curse? There's a curse on you? It seems so. I've had a run of bad luck lately. This is no joke. Let me help you. What do you think happened to it? Do you think it simply disappeared with the wind? Hmm? Uh, still, despite all this, the game did warrant getting a reboot sequel in 2012. So the game lived on despite the voice acting. And that's our list. But let us know, what game do you think had the worst voice acting and which game had the best voice act? Let me know in a comment. We do read our comments and that might kind of give us some guidance for maybe future videos. Who knows? Also, we don't have a sponsor lined up for today's video. So if you guys need to fill up on your gamer subs, I drink it every single day. Their new lemonade flavor is also really good, but I still drink the Russian Badgers guacamole gamer fart 9000. Otherwise, a huge thank you to our patrons for supporting us. I know we're doing different types of content. We've been trying to grow our channel out more than just covering one game. So all of the support from you guys have made this possible. So if you want to support us, throw a few bucks our way. Maybe consider becoming a patron if you're not already. Uh, and here are the awesome people that help support us. All right. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time with a new video.